the third station, Jesus falls the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Who here has never fallen, has never tripped, slipped, stumbled, fallen downstairs, fallen upstairs, fallen out of bed? One of my earliest memories is as a four-year-old playing on the sidewalks of Brooklyn, playing with other four- and five-year-olds, one of whom was my five-year-old brother. We were all adventurous that early summer evening, so we decided to take a walk around the block. About halfway through our journey, I go, smack down on a slab of concrete and split my left knee wide open. Jump ahead. Next thing I remember, I'm sitting on a chair in the kitchen, hysterical, blood rolling down my leg, covering my little white sock. My brother is shouting, they're going to cut your leg off. In another room, another brother is crying in a crib, my mother doing everything to calm me down and heal this massive wound. Has a scene like that ever played out in your home? No one looks to fall. It is not planned. No one wants to feel the pain of a fall or worse, the embarrassment of a fall. And don't let anyone tell you that falls are only common to the clumsy, to children, or to the elderly, or to the physically challenged. Falling happens to everyone. That fall I took decades ago was not my first fall or my last fall, but it's the fall that left me with a visible memory and a still visible scar on my left knee. There are so many kinds of falling, including falling in love, but let's not go there tonight. I'm thinking right now about the times we fall out of favor, fall out of grace with each other, and thereby fall out of favor and grace with God. A while back, over a year ago now, I had a falling out of favor of grace with someone. And while it was not the first falling out of favor I've ever experienced, this one left me scarred. And like the fall I took on the concrete as a four-year-old, this falling out came unexpectedly. Nor was I prepared for the hurt, for the pain, the worry of a lost friendship, the change in my life situation this falling could potentially cause. Again, may I ask you, has this ever played out in your life? But the two falls in my life that I referenced tonight and the dozens of other falls, the physical and the non-physical, does not even measure up to the first fall of Jesus centuries ago. What made Jesus go down? Was it the weight of the solid wooden cross? This Jesus of Nazareth, who was known as the carpenter's son, had difficulty carrying wood? If you ask Alexa or Google, how much did that cross that Jesus carried weigh? You will be told approximately 300 pounds. Yes, that could certainly bring anyone to the ground in pain. 
This journey of sorrow that we commemorate each Friday in Lent is not just about 300 pounds of solid wood laid on the shoulder of Jesus. The 300 pounds of solid wood holds every fall of humankind, like the fall of Adam and Eve, like the fall of the Israelites and the bad attitude they showed toward Moses, like the fall of Jonah when he did not listen to the instructions of God, and all the falls that happened while Jesus walked on earth, especially those last days of his life, the fall of Peter and his denial of Christ, the betrayal of Judas, the fall of the two thieves who were crucified beside Jesus, and all the falls that happened after Jesus rose from the dead, including all my falls from favor and grace and all your falls from favor and grace, and all the falls from favor and grace that will happen from this moment on to the end of time. And all the falls out of favor and grace we have, whether we are aware of it or not, whether we know the people or not, adds to the weight of that cross. That's what brought Jesus down to his knees. That's the pain he felt on that first Good Friday. That's the pain we commit to memory tonight. As we retell this story of the last journey on earth of Jesus and come to this particular station of Jesus falling for the first time, our thought might be, oh Jesus, please don't go please don't go to this trouble for me. I'll behave and do good and I'll try not to fall out of favor again. You can't bargain with Jesus. What sort of followers, disciples are we of Jesus if we continually allow him to carry this cross, these burdens for us? Well, I think, I think we're pretty good disciples of Christ because we realize we would destroy ourselves if we didn't let Jesus take on these burdens, these falls that come to us. If you do not hand over these falls to Jesus, your life will be consumed with stress and anxiety, loss of sleep, constant looking over your shoulder, tiptoeing around people. But if we allow Jesus to fall with the cross of our burdens, of our sins, we are allowed to rise up. I'll say it again. When we allow Jesus to fall with the cross of our burdens, of our sins, we are allowed to rise up. This is how it works. With true remorse and repentance, the fall of Adam and Eve gave us the promise of a savior. With true remorse and repentance, the disgruntlement of the Jewish people in the desert with Moses led to a promised land. With true remorse and repentance, the denial by Peter led him to be the first leader of the church. With remorse and repentance, a thief on the cross was the first to be led to paradise. A fall out of favor or grace 
led me to seek mercy from the one I hurt and made angry. And with a grateful heart, I gave praise and thanks to Jesus. Praise and thanks to Jesus for this person he put in my life, who, show, who showed me mercy so I could be raised up. This Sunday, we celebrate tran the transfiguration of Jesus, the story of Jesus with Peter, James, and John going up the mountain. Th this mountain would be the highest point on earth. Jesus would stand, be dazzled in white, truly glorified, a stark contrast from his lowest point, the first fall on the journey to Calvary. The falling with the cross is a very ugly moment in time, just like our fallings are very ugly moments in our lifetime. We are still at the beginning of our Lenten journey. We can take this journey of sorrow, a journey of sorrow that is for Jesus, and make it our journey of hope because there is a hope, there is a rise up. Jesus will be raised from the dead. Jesus will rise up to his Father. Just as Jesus fell for us, carrying the cross, now with our true remorse and repentance, he offers us the glory of a rise up to heaven. <laughs>